The Rebel Alliance, also known as the Alliance to Restore the Republic, was a loose and small union of planets that experienced a series of failures at first, but was eventually able to take on the largest and most powerful empire in the galaxy, the Galactic Empire. So how powerful was the Rebel Alliance? For this video, we will only be comparing the strengths and weaknesses of the Rebel Alliance from 2 BBY to 4 ABY, as afterwards it was reorganized as the Alliance of Free Planets and then later to the New Republic. The first seeds of rebellion against the Empire first began as a peaceful movement by a political minority within the Galactic Senate, known as the Delegation of 2000. The delegation was made up of senators including Padme Amidala, Bail Organa, and Mon Mothma, who were concerned with the amount of power Palpatine was gaining and wished to restore the Republic back to its democratic ways before the Clone Wars. The delegation of 2000 ultimately failed when Palpatine declared the Republic as an empire, with himself as emperor. The Empire ended up arresting at least 63 senators of the delegation, as a warning. Out of fear, half of the senators of the delegation left. Prior to Amidala's death, the Naboo senator advised her political allies to oppose the Emperor in secret, while feigning obedience at the same time. Throughout the next 17 years, there would be minor uprisings against the Empire. These included uprisings on Naboo, Kamino, and a few separatist holdouts. All these uprisings would end up being crushed with ease. Along with the uprisings, there are also many disorganized rebel cells throughout the galaxy that openly attacked Imperial personnel and resources. Around this time, Darth Vader was training his secret apprentice, Galen Marek, also known as Starkiller. At 2 BBY, Darth Vader would order Galen Marek to search the galaxy for various rebels and unite them into a single rebellion against the Empire, causing the Empire into a state of civil war. Vader reasoned that doing so would create an opportunity for him to kill the Emperor would be too distracted by the infighting. Through the help of Galen Marek, the Rebel Alliance would be founded by Bail Organa, Mon Mothma, and Garmbel Iblis, along with Princess Leia Organa, pledging herself to the Alliance. The Rebel Alliance's emblem would be based off of Galen Marek's family crest, after he sacrificed himself to save the Rebel leaders. Initially, Bail Organa would fund the Rebellion, Garmbel Iblis would provide the Rebellion's fleet, and Mon Mothma would provide the soldiers. At first, virtually all of the Alliance's war plans, uprisings, and operations were crushed with ease by the Empire. This was mainly due to the fact that the Alliance was vastly outmanned and outgunned by the well-organized and powerful Imperial military. As a result, the Alliance would go on from conventionally fighting the Empire to using hit-and-run tactics designed to harass Imperial shipping and operations. The Alliance would also adapt the stateless strategy strategy where the Alliance wouldn't have a clearly defined homeworld or territory. This meant that the Rebels could perform an attack and then retreat and hide into the vastness of space. In other words, they were always on the move. As the Alliance started to have some major victories, more and more worlds would join its cause. One notable ally that joined were the Mon Calamari, who used their renowned skill in ship construction to build and provide the Alliance fleet with capital ships. The Alliance would go on to consume most of the remaining Separatist holdouts, obtaining some Separatist tanks, droids, and ships. After its major victory in the Battle of Yavin, with the destruction of the first Death Star, thousands of star systems would openly join the Alliance. This would go on to make the Alliance a legitimate military opponent to the Empire. Following this major victory, the Alliance would face many setbacks. One would be when Alliance founder Garmbel Iblis would leave the Alliance after arguing with Mon Mothma over her reckless tactics and overusage of suicide missions. He also felt that she was turning into more of a dictator and would take Palpatine's place after the war. Garmbel Iblis would go on to start his own separate rebellion after the Empire. This was a major blow, as prior to the Battle of Yavin, the Empire used the Death Star to destroy Alderaan, a planet that harbored and aided the Rebels, which resulted in the death of another Alliance founder. Bail Organa. These two events left Mon Mothma as the sole leader of the Alliance, and was rarely challenged over her position. Another setback was when the Alliance's main base on Hoth was destroyed during the Battle of Hoth, forcing the Alliance to scatter and remain on the move in fear of losing another main base. Despite these setbacks, the Alliance would eventually engage the Empire in the Battle of Endor, and end up destroying the second Death Star and killing both Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine. After this massive victory, the Rebel Alliance would transform into the New Republic a month later. The Alliance military structure was designed by Bail Organa, who used his experiences on the Old Republic Senate Military Oversight Committee to aid in setting up the Alliance High Command. Mon Mothma was the Commander-in-Chief, with Gialak Bar being appointed to Supreme Commander in 4ABY. 
The Alliance military was separated into two distinct branches, Alliance forces and sector forces. The sector forces were semi-autonomous military units that were responsible for maintaining the rebellion on local levels. They basically were larger and more organized rebel cells that worked with the Alliance and would resist the Empire within their own sector. That's the name. Each sector unit's numbers and equipment would vary, but they usually consisted of at least a few thousand soldiers. They would mainly use guerrilla warfare tactics when fighting the Empire. Altogether, the sector force was the largest arm of the Alliance military. Although it isn't exactly known, we can guesstimate that there were a few million to a few hundred million rebels under this branch, spread across countless worlds. Unlike the sector forces, the Alliance forces were directly controlled by the Alliance High Command. This included the Alliance Army, the Alliance Fleet, and the Starfighter Corps. The Alliance Army was a small but powerful ground force maintained by the Alliance High Command. Unlike the Empire, the Alliance allowed non-humans to join their ranks, which gave the Alliance soldiers certain attributes. Morale of soldiers was high, and commanders tended to perform better than their Imperial counterparts. Due to the fact that the Alliance Army would almost always be outnumbered in battle, they utilized hit-and-run tactics. Rebel commanders would strike the enemy at its weakest point, and try to destroy the enemy's morale. During defensive operations, rebel army units were often tasked to provide cover while important rebel assets escaped. Extended defensive battles would always result in the Imperial Army eventually overwhelming them with superior numbers. Most vehicles used by the Alliance Army tended to be lighter and faster than the Imperial vehicles. This allowed the rebels to outmaneuver and attack weak points of the Imperial forces, and if needed, be able to retreat the overwhelming enemy. Some of the vehicles were from the Clone Wars era, like the ATT and modified Hellfire droid tank. A branch of the Alliance Army was the Alliance Special Force, also known as Spec Force. Those of the Spec Force were highly skilled and dedicated soldiers. Special Forces candidates underwent extensive examination to determine political, physical, educational, technical, and mental suitability. They also performed extensive background checks to ensure none were Imperial spies. Candidates would undergo intense training, with many of them either dropping out or failing to meet the expectations. The Alliance wanted to make sure that only the best of the best were part of the Spec Force. This would result in the Spec Force barely having 100,000 soldiers. The Alliance fleet was the single most powerful unit available to the Alliance High Command. Due to lack of funds, most of the ships in the Rebel fleet were either captured or donated by Allied worlds, and many of them tended to be non-military design. The size of the fleet was also a small fraction of what the Imperial Navy was. Though over time and under the leadership of Admiral Akbar, the Rebel fleet would become organized and be equipped with powerful non-Calamari star cruisers. Like the ground forces, the fleet would use hit-and-run tactics. Had it committed to a full battle with the Imperial Navy, it would have been completely destroyed. The Alliance Starfighter Corps was a separate branch from the Alliance fleet. It consisted of powerful starfighters like X-Wings and A-Wings, which possessed their own shields and hyperdrives, unlike the Empire's TIE Fighters. Despite many of the pilots lacking formal training, their battle experiences made them deadly and aggressive pilots who seemed to outperform many of the Imperial pilots. The Alliance also had the Force on their side, with a few Jedi like Rom Koda and Alliance hero Luke Skywalker fighting alongside the Rebels. In summary, the Rebel Alliance started out as a small band of disorganized renegades that, after gaining victory, started to be supported by more and more worlds. The Alliance was widely supported by non-human species, who were sick of the Empire's discrimination policies. Though the Rebel Alliance became nowhere near as powerful as the Galactic Empire, its persistence and dedication to its cause eventually made the Empire lose its firm grip in the galaxy, and gave way to the Rebel Alliance to become the New Republic, which became more of an equal to the remaining Galactic Empire. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the Force be with you.